Hello there. Um, oh, my mouse. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so yeah, this is going to be a video showing you how to use uh, Inkscape. So let me go ahead and open it up. It takes a little while on a Mac because um, it runs like inside of another program. It's kind of weird. Anyhow, um, but yeah, so uh, the first thing I do when I want to make a thumbnail is I go up to File and Document Properties. And I change the units to pixels and make it 1280 by 720 because that's the size YouTube wants your thumbnails to be. Um, you don't have to click save or anything. You just close out that window and it'll be working. I mean, it'll it'll be like it's supposed to be. Um, the next thing I do is uh, I draw a rectangle. And then after I've drawn the rectangle, I change the width to 1280 and the height to 720. And then you click off of it and click back on, and then you can change the X to zero and the Y to zero. And I'll show you why I do that in a little while. But <clears throat> anyhow, after you do that, you're going to want to import the picture. So, um, so no, not this. Ah, there, this picture. So this is the picture that I'm going to be using for the background of my thumbnail. Um, so you just import it. I think you already did that or you know how to do that. Um, and then you're going to take this to the back. And um, because pictures or the pictures that you use, they usually aren't the size that uh, the thumbnail is going to be. So what I do is I take this and then I sort of move this around. Sometimes you can like change the width. Uh, if you lock the height and width together first, and then you go into width, and you can make that 1280, and it'll and then change x to zero, and then you can sort of move it up. Um, I'll make the square a little op opaque so I can see what's going on behind there. Um, the put opaque stuff is over here, um, and then yeah, I can move this up a little bit. And then once I'm happy with it, you click the square, and then you hold shift, and you click on the background, and you right click on it, and you say, <clears throat> not set Mac mask, but set clip, and then it'll clip that image there. Okay, so that's how you do the basic thing, uh, the, the, the basic uh, background or whatever. Um, and then uh, let's say... Um, I want to have just uh, the cube. Let me see if I can get a picture of a cube real quick. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know how I can. I'll I'll be right back. Okay, I got my picture. Oh, come on. I just stole this from Google. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this picture down a little bit. Actually, I don't need to. I won't do that yet. Um. So if you have a picture like this and you want to get rid of the background, the easiest way to do it is to grab this pen tool here, which, by the way, you're going to want to learn how to use this pen tool. Um, I'll show the, like, the basics of doing it, but you just use practice. Um, uh, if you look here, I'm sort of uh, like clicking here and like cutting off the corner, but we'll come back and fix that later. So again here, so to cut across that corner, and then I'm not putting too much detail into this. You can go be way more detailed. OK, now I'm going to go over here and click on this editing tool, which is up in that corner over there. Um, sort of move this point around. And go over here, grab this. You can pull it out like that. In this corner down here. And then, so I don't want to pull this. Nope. Uh, maybe I should add another point. Add point. 
Oh, oops, I selected too many points there. Um, Control Z. Move that point. Oh my. Um, let's make that a flat curve. Um, sheesh. Anyhow, um, you can play around with the pen tool when you have time to do that. Uh, but yeah, um, one thing I do want to say is when you're drawing with the pen tool, you don't just have to like click, click, and then click. You can also click and drag. It's just a standard pen tool. It's the same as you would have in Photoshop or anything like that. Um, but yeah, now that we have this, you can click on this and then click on the picture. And then like we did before, you say, uh, yeah, let me click up a little bit, uh, a little bit higher, set clip. And then there you have your wonderful picture with the background removed. Mm. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we have this picture here, and we have our background. And then, let's say we want a uh, gradient, because you like to use gradients in your things. So um, I'll put a little square here, and then I'll set the fill to a gradient. And there we already have a pretty nice gradient. Um, the way that you edit gradients, I think I remember this correctly, is you click on this little tool down here, it's kind of strange, um, and then you can click on the first color and you can set the first color, so let's say we want it to be white, and then you can cl click on the second color and you can say what well, you want that color to be. Um, so we can make that white as well, and make it more opaque or less opaque or whatever. Um, so let's set that one to zero, that one to 100%, and then I think we may have the, huh. I don't know, 100% opacity. There you go. So now we have like sort of like a, a flash there, and we can take this, bring it to the top, and put it over here, I don't know, I'm just sort of doing this right now. Um, and then if you want to add some text, you can click on the little text icon, like I'm sure you know. Uh, and then we can say, hello world. In case you don't know, whenever people make uh, uh, programming, like, whenever they make their first, first program or whatever, they're supposed to say, hello world. So, let's see. Um, I'm going to go in here and change the font to Avenir. Next. It's my favorite. That's the, the font that I use in my thumbnails. And then select this, Control-B. And then uh, what I do with mine is I make them like that, and then I draw a square on top of it. Um, I'm going to have to change that color, and then bring it down so it's underneath the text. Oops. Oh, the text is the same color. Yeah, and then you make the text white. There you go. Um, and you can make this another color instead of black, like maybe gray. That works. Uh, anything else? I guess I can show you how to use masks. That's kind of important. So let me import just a random picture. This one. Picture of... Rick Sanchez. Ooh, I know what I can do. Um, this isn't something that you'll necessarily use for uh, your pictures. I don't know if you'd ever need to use it, but it's kind of nice to know about. Um, what you can do is you can take a picture. It's just a nice functionality that Inkscape has. and you uh, So you select your image, and then you say path, 
and then trace bitmap. And let's say remove background and we want colors. There you go. Then you say OK. Close this out. <laughs> I thought the hair was the background. That's funny. Anyhow, you can convert stuff into a bitmap by doing that. And what that means is let's edit this. It turns into like a collection of points like that. Control Z. So that's nice if you're making stickers or something. Um, I'm going to undo all that. Um, so yeah, we're trying to... Oh my, what is this? I don't know how that happened. Oh. Well, that's strange. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what happened there. Um, anyhow, so uh, if you want to make a gradient, I mean, uh, if you want to make a mask, which is a gradient or something like that, what you can do, like, uh, this is what I did for the the picture of the ghost that I had in yours, is you'll take this, you'll say, set it as a gradient. You're going to want to set one of them as black. Black. You're going to want to set the other one as white. White and 100% opacity. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, let's put this below that. And then you select both of those things and you say set mask. And let's undo that. Uh, it, it matters what order you select them in, I think. I'm not sure which order you're supposed to do. Maybe I'm doing it right. Um, oh, let me move this to here, and this to here. Um, I don't know. It's kind of complicated, but if you want to do something like that, you can look it up on uh, YouTube. That's what I did. That's how I learned how to use this program. Anyhow, so yeah, this is my thumbnail. And then once you're done with the thumbnail, you go down here and you say page and um, actually drawing, I think page or drawing, I'm not sure. Um, why is it 1440? Oh, yeah, it, it, it has it at whatever um, density. And so it's not going to be exactly 1280 by 720, but it'll be in the right ratio. And then you say what you want to export it as. So I'm going to go into desktop and say thumbnail.png save. Oops. Save. Um, let me edit this. I don't want it there. Um, and then once you save it, you also have to click export. And it'll export it. I don't care about that. And we have a beautiful thumbnail. So yeah, that's that's all the basically how I make my thumbnails. Hopefully you can learn something from that. <laughs>